Sam metronom. Hello. So Sam metronom means hi in my native language, which is Mongolian. And hello means hello in a cursive accent. My name is Jinji Badam. Just like the channel's name, it's my full name with 11 letters. It's my full first name. I'm just emphasizing this because a lot of people kind of get confused. They're like, is it really your full name? Like, why is it so long? Um, but yeah, that's that. So you can refer to me as Jinji Batam, the full, or Jinji for short. So welcome to my channel. So I have my notes here. I just don't want to forget anything because it is a remake of a video that I did in 2020, the last video I did, and it is in Mongolian, so now I'm making the English version. Before I dive into the whole video, um, there is something that I wish someone told me when I was younger, which is that change is a normal part of life, change is inevitable. Humans change throughout their lives, so you can learn new things, you can pick up new hobbies and interests. Following all these changes happening in your life, your career, choice might want to change and that is completely normal. The reason why I wish someone told me that is because I was so stressed when I was finishing high school and like to think of making one big decision for the rest of my life really like panicked me. I think if someone told me this it would have been much more easier for me. So right now in my life I'm living in Paris and if you're wondering what I do for a living, I think I do a lot of things. Sometimes I'm an art director, sometimes I help with producing and production, sometimes I shoot, sometimes I edit, sometimes I animate, sometimes I make 3D stuff, so it's a really big mix of things that I do for a living. So initially I came to Paris to study fashion business. The actual name of my program was fashion, luxury, retail management. You had like a wide range of classes and courses. So like I had accounting, but at the same time I had fashion history. I had marketing classes, but at the same time I also had like branding classes. Also like human resources, consumer behavior, like really a lot of the general business courses I had. And at the same time, like niche fashion courses, if you will. So I studied that for my bachelor's. And after I finished my studies, I started working in the marketing slash creative production part of the industry. And since then I've worked for a production agency. I worked for a few brands. This video is the English version of the video that I made in 2020. Um, the one I made then was in Mongolian. So I'm making the English version of it now. Like finally, after two years, I collected enough courage to make up the English video. And I wanted to make that video for the younger version of myself, specifically for the one who was finishing high school six years ago, um, who was totally lost in choosing a career path. path. The reason why I was lost, like to explain why I felt lost, I think a lot of people do feel this pressure when making a decision at the end of high school. Um, for me, I wanted to be a designer ever since I was really young. Like since the age of five, I was making clothes for my dolls. I really liked to cut up rags and, you know, just make something new out of it. And I used to spend all my summers in the countryside with my grandparents. And at this age, I really didn't have a lot of access to, um, like the fashion industry knowledge, if you will. And I didn't know that fashion designer was like, a job all I knew was that I wanted to be someone who made clothes. As the years went by and as I have aged and collected life experience and lived my life I reached the end of high school and this is when I had to choose a career, a university and make legit life decisions. And I was finishing up my high school in Mongolia and I was pretty lost because I didn't know where I could go to get advice. Like I didn't even know what type of advice that I needed and was looking for. So like I said, I was pretty lost because I knew I was interested in fashion design and I looked at schools in Mongolia and all the fashion schools just offered fashion design programs. And when I looked at schools abroad, fashion design schools were quite pricey so I was kind of afraid like I was kind of terrified of thinking about 
studying fashion design because my overthinking brain thought that I was not good enough, not talented enough, and not like rich enough to afford design school. So at one point in high school, I kind of gave up that idea of wanting to study design and wanting to work as a designer. And I actually started looking for other things that I could do in life. Like with a lot of uncertainty, with a lot of doubt, I started looking at other programs that I could kind of study like I was thinking to myself yeah I could do like I could study art history and become a teacher I could study social sciences like like I kind of like social studies like and actually I applied to study humanities in a university in Australia and I almost went I got in and I was actually starting to look for accommodation but I ended up not going because it was the year before my graduation so I haven't yet finished high school so I was like maybe like I think my parents and I decided that I should finish high school so I did so that was that and I didn't end up going to Australia to study humanity so like I mentioned I used to spend every summer at my grandparents in, in the countryside and the year that I did not go to Australia. I picked up a job in the city as a sales assistant and I stayed home alone in the city where the rest of my family went to the countryside for the summer and I worked my first job as a sales assistant. This experience really opened my eyes to the business side of fashion and that there were other creative jobs in the industry such as you know styling and visual, visual merchandising and so on. So after working my summer job, my first summer job, I found out that you could study fashion business related programs. It's really hard for me to say this, but this was seven years ago. I can't believe it was seven years ago, but I like it feels like it was last year that I was like looking for fashion business programs, but really it was seven years ago. So seven years ago when I started looking for fashion business programs that program was relatively new when I looked for schools a select few fashion schools offered it like a few business schools offered it and so I happened to go to a business school that offered a fashion business program but now a lot of like pretty much all of the fashion schools and a lot of business schools offer fashion business programs so now you have like a lot of choices to choose from just to tie everything up, I personally had such a misconception when I was younger. Um, I thought that a fashion designer was the most important person within the industry. I mean, I'm not saying that it's not an important role. It is definitely one of the most defining roles within the industry. But there are other creative jobs that you can do in the fashion industry so in the past six years of studying of working and doing internships backstage and for brands and so on i have done a lot of interesting jobs um i realized that in the industry there are so many possibilities and opportunities of doing a creative job like for example when you're preparing a show or a presentation for a brand the amount of people and talent you need is it's crazy you need an immense amount of people and talent to create a show like for example you probably need a casting director to find all your models who will present your clothes you probably need a producer to produce your show to do everything production related you know uh, you probably need a stylist to put together your looks you need like photographers to take photos of your collection for publicity or for sales like you need photographers to take pictures of your lookbook you need hair hairstylists to style the hair makeup artists to the to the makeup artists to do the makeup um, manicurists for the nails you probably need a lot of assistants on the day to assist you backstage it's a lot of fashion students assistant shows so really the list goes on and on and on there are lots of jobs in the fashion industry to summarize making a career related decision is difficult but it's not the end of the world. It's not the last decision that you will ever make. 
like I said earlier, life changes, so it's completely normal for you to change your opinion and interests and your jobs and your careers and your schools. It's completely normal. Like a lot of us, if you are unsure, you can try new things. You can try out new classes, new courses, or a new part-time job to see if it's really for you. And the final thing I want to say is that the industry is evolving. It is always changing like many other industries in the world because of innovations and technological advancements and events in the world, the industry will always be changing. New jobs will always be created. So like keep your mind open, try new things. You never know like what might stick and what, what you might enjoy. And that is the English version of the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, like it you know like like comment and subscribe i'm saying this because i kind of want to like do more on youtube now so if you want to stick around be sure to subscribe and i will be coming back to you very soon hopefully not two years later so have a good morning evening afternoon and i will see you soon bye